Good evening, welcome again to Health at the Park. This evening, we're going to pick up where we left off and I'm going to talk about ways that we can use food and other remedies to continue your journey in getting better and increasing your immunity level. Weren't you inspired by the testimony of Brother Chuck? Well, like him, there's a lot of other people that are finding simple ways to get better even with COVID. So without further ado, we'll go ahead and start my presentation. Thank you. On Monday, we discussed the building blocks of an effective immune system. We talked about foods and specific nutrients that have been found helpful in boosting the immune system to avoid disease. And lastly, we discussed factors that can affect immunity. Today, we will focus on strategies that can make a difference when we get a viral infection. What I'm sharing is based on many different experiences from both people like you and me, as well as health professionals who have been able to share what they have learned and that what has worked best for them. Please note that this information is not meant to replace medical advice and is in no way complete due to time restraints. I hope you find this information helpful and that you share with those who you love. So what types of foods to eat? So as I was searching information to share with you, I found that really there isn't a lot. And what I decided to do is to speak with people that I know have been affected recently with COVID. And also I posted a question and to a group that I belong to. I noticed that the virus, virus can affect people in the same family very differently. And there are some specific remedies that at least with the information I received seem to be especially helpful. I will share what I found. The first point is going to deal with what to eat. So I, as I was asking people about what to eat, they gave me different answers. One person said that they were having juice for two meals a day. Another person shared that they were taking vegan shakes that helped them get some strength and that they took herbal teas, fruit, lentils, and brown rice. Another person said they didn't have any appetite at all, but that they ate fruit and immune boosting soups with added vegetables. Another one said, I took broths and vegetable soups. That was our staple. Tea helped settle the stomach and also grape juice. Fruit smoothies every morning and vegetable soups told another. And then there was a family of four. This was a husband and two children. The wife stated that the husband had and the children had an appetite, but she didn't. But she was still, still uh, recognized she needed to eat. So she sat down with them at each meal and ate mostly fruits and vegetables. This family also noted that they felt that the recovery will be long and that they needed to eat regardless of how they felt. Here we see some other responses. Honey was another one. And uh, another one said that they didn't feel like eating at all, but that they were drinking electrolyte type beverage, uh, such as uh, Gatorade or another type called Spring and also had some grapes. Now, here I want to take a little pause and discuss the topic of electrolytes. Electrolytes are minerals that help our body carry out vital functions, such as muscle contraction, which is what the heart does all day long. It, they help in maintaining pH balance and also nursing signaling. What are sources of electrolytes? Beverages, beverages like coconut water, watermelon, natural fruit juices, and sport drinks, such as the ones I just mentioned, um, they can help replenish electrolytes because these sport drinks, um, they have sodium and potassium mostly. Pedialyte is another example. So the recommendation will be is look for electrolyte beverages that have no added sugars 
A typical eight ounce electrolyte drink has approximately 14 grams of sugar. That's about three teaspoons. Also, oftentimes they have added food colorings. So by focusing on natural resources of electrolytes or choosing a zero or low calorie option, those will be the best choices. And it will help for those of you that have diabetes to be able to keep your blood sugar levels in better control. As you probably know, people with diabetes, when they get sick, their blood sugars go very high. And that's part of how the body reacts to the condition. So coconut water or even bananas may also be a good option if you're looking for, again, another natural source of electrolytes. So what are electrolytes? Electrolytes include potassium, sodium, chloride, phosphate, magnesium. The most common signs of low electrolytes include dizziness, cramps, irregular heartbeat, mental confusion. And if you're doing water treatments, one of the things that you will notice is that you're going to perspire a lot. So it's very important that you remember to continue to hydrate and take some form of electrolytes. The common signs of low electrolytes may include dizziness, cramps, irregular heartbeat, and or mental confusion. Usually low electrolytes are caused because of intense exercise and sweating. So that's something that obviously athletes deal with. But if you are having a fever, that will definitely put you right there with them. Vomiting, um, hyperglycemia, and diarrhea. Signs of dehydration uh, include feeling extremely weak, muscle cramping or spasms, dry lips and tongue, headaches, or nausea. Now they are, um, if you search online, you will find that there are recipes online on how to make your own electrolytes. One recipe that I saw basically called for a quarter teaspoon of salt, a quarter cup of pomegranate juice or orange juice, half of a lemon, one and a half cups of unsweetened coconut water, as well as two, cold, two cups of cold water plus honey to taste. Dehydration is one of the biggest reasons why people end up in the emergency room when they're sick. So if left untreated, dehydration can cause urinary and kidney problems, seizures, and can also be life-threatening. Another person said that they were having fruit vegetables, herbal teas. Again, they were taking electrolyte drinks and they were also eating vegetables. So notice there's kind of a pattern here. We see that several people were taking uh, fruits and vegetables and eating lightly. One person shared, I made myself eat salty foods that seemed to taste better uh, and they had lost the sense of taste. They also had berries and other fruits, oatmeal and herbal teas at room temperature, okay? And another one actually didn't really lose his appetite. He uh, was able to eat smaller quantities of food but he was still eating things like beans and rice uh, also, they were using a different kind of immune boosting beverage that included lemon, radish, red onion, garlic, ginger, and honey. So this that he shared that even though he couldn't, he could not, I should, I should have <laughs> typed there, he could not taste or smell, he never lost his appetite. So this is uh, why I was saying earlier that the symptoms can vary from person to person. So let's take a look at food as medicine. So I will encourage uh, anyone to include, if, especially if sick, two cups of berries or more, and include at least two cloves of, gar of, of garlic. Last, uh, on Monday, we talked about garlic and the fact that it has allicin. And also, these are some examples of herbal teas. The recommendation is uh, try your best to drink these teas at least every one to two hours. And examples of good choices would be herbal teas such as elderberry, mullein, which is good for the lungs, rose hips, which is a great source of vitamin C, peppermint, which is good for the stomach, echinacea, which can build the immune system, and golden seal. 
Other helpful natural remedies include oregano and eucalyptus, which are essential oils that we recommend. The Russian steam bath that you uh, already saw, fomentations, hot and cold shower treatments, and onion poultices. The eucalyptus is native to Australia. It is an expectorant, clears nasal passages, enhances the immune system and alleviates headaches. Also, it contains antimicrobial and antiviral benefits. It's antifungal and can help alleviate pain, manage tension. And another benefit that's very helpful in this area, it also works as an insect repellent. Oregano is an antioxidant, antibacterial, antiviral. It also has properties for wound healing and reduces inflammation, as well as um, benefits for loosening mucus and phlegm from the lungs. Can be very helpful also in treating a sore throat. It's antiparasitic and also repels insects. So to use the essential oil to alleviate upper respiratory symptoms, one method includes taking two to three drops of an essential oil, such as the one I mentioned, and put it on a spoon and then dipping the spoon in a basin with hot water and then breathing this um, steam for five to 10 minutes. One thing that will help is also to drape yourself with a blanket or sheet so that way you can really in inhale um, the oil much better. It could also be used as a preventative measure one to two times per day. So if you feel like you perhaps were in, uh, exposed to COVID, let's say, uh, that might be something to consider. Now, if, the, if you are already infected with COVID, the recommendation by one person that I listened to was that they recommend to do these treatments every two hours. Another thing that could be helpful is to do a gargle. So for the gargle method, in 12 ounces of water, you want to add one drop of the essential oil and then gargle throughout the day a few times a day. If you are already experiencing infection, then the recommendation states to gargle every hour while awake. Okay, another thing that can uh, happen quite often, understandably, is high stress when sick. Lavender oil is a, a type of oil that can help with stress relief. And you can put it in your bathtub or just infuse it, diffuse it in the room. Um, you, when you go into the bathtub, the recommendation is to soak for at least 15 to 20 minutes. You may want to add Epsom salt, which also has magnesium. And you can combine your essential oils such as lavender, eucalyptus, or peppermint oil. And then after you finish with the 20 minutes of soaking, finish with a hot and cold contrast shower, as, as it was explained earlier. So generally speaking, it could be three minutes of hot alternating with 30 seconds of cold times three. Listen to soft music. That's another strategy. Claim God's promises. Take 10 to 15 minute walks and pray. So I'm going to talk now about the onion poultice in a little bit more detail. I never heard of onion poultices until recently. But when I started looking at this information and talking to some people I know, I have heard of three people that mentioned to me that this was one of the remedies that helped them the most. And this is something that is... Um, so simple that most of us have at home. So to help increase the oxygen saturation, the materials needed will be a large red onion, preferably. And you can either use a pillowcase or a paper towel 
and plastic wrap to secure this poultice in place. So the procedure is you want to chop the onion and then place the onion in a skillet. You want to add a little water so you can soften the onion lightly. Then you wanna let it cool and place the chopped or cooled onion inside a paper uh, towel and secure it with the plastic wrap or place the chopped onion inside a pillowcase. Next, you wanna place it on the chest for at least 20 to 30 minutes. And something that can help um, enhance the effect of the onion poultice is using a hot fermentation over it or maybe a hot water bottle. So I'm also gonna talk to you about immunity boosting drinks. There are many versions of immunity boosting drinks. Sometimes they're referred as nature penicillin or even Russian penicillin. And so for this particular one that I wanna show you today, the ingredients are one grapefruit, two oranges, one lemon, three cloves of garlic, one red onion. And for the procedure, Basically, what you want to do is uh, peel off the color part of the uh, fruit. So in other words, you just want to remove the, the outer, most outer layer and then blend all the ingredients with some water. And then after that, you, if you like, you may add three drops of peppermint oil. And we recommend to drink one cup per day. Now, if, if I'm sick, what are some of the things that I can do in terms of additional supplements? And somebody asked on Monday about vitamin C. And to be honest, the recommendation for vitamin C um, in a case of COVID can vary as you see different people talking about it. And, but a safe zone for most people will be about 2000 milligrams a day, but it has been used in much higher amounts. Zinc, 75 milligrams daily for five to six days, and then lower it to 25 milligrams per day. Quercetin, which helps you, and I don't know if you remember from Monday, quercetin helps you to absorb zinc. You want to take that 500 milligrams twice a day. And then for vitamin D, depending on your level, um, if you know that your level is low, you may consider taking 50,000 uh, units for three days and then drop it down to 10,000 units. The goal of the blood sugar level, a blood level for vitamin D is 60 to 75 nanograms per deciliter minimum. Also, don't forget that you need seven to eight hours of sleep per day, drink plenty of water. Uh, continue with fever baths and contrast showers or Russian steam bath. Avoid sugars. Uh, consider using helpful essential oils, such as the ones I mentioned earlier. Uh, make sure you're getting enough fresh air. Uh, do deep breathing every one to two hours and also get some sunlight and then trust in God. Another thing that I've heard recently, but I definitely don't know a lot about, but I just wanted to bring these next points very briefly as to things you might want to research is considering nasal hygiene. What does that mean? When we are outside, out and about running errands and so forth, it is possible that we could be exposed to a virus. And so if you know that, especially in a place where there might have been exposure, something that um, I heard about recently is doing a povidine iodine swab. You can actually purchase these iodine swabs online, or you can also use Q-tips with a diluted solution of hydrogen peroxide. Um, also black seed and honey mixture is another thing that seems to be very powerful. I don't have a lot of information. I just want to mention it and encourage you to look for more information. The botanical name of black seed is Nigella sativa. And in a study, the group that was taking Nigella sativa, it was found that they have 50% reduction in the time needed for improvement of symptoms, 
they were able to improve in four days versus seven days in the placebo group. This is um, an ingredient or um, a seed that we are definitely hearing. There's ongoing studies going even for prevention of COVID, but we don't have the results at this time. And also in that study that I, I mentioned, it showed that severe cases uh, were reduced by about a whole week. And the, for most people, it seems like the dose was a teaspoon of oil with one tablespoon of raw honey three times a day. Another one uh, that you may have heard about is Artemisia or known commonly as wormwood. And it's been noted to be very hopeful, uh, helpful. The dose for this um, is one dropper full of tincture twice a day and start with a few drops at first. And uh, it is an excellent source of zinc. Um, this Artemisia stimulates the adaptive immune response and helps in reducing inflammation. Uh, it also comes in the form of teas as well as capsules. For capsules, the dose I saw was four to eight capsules per day, depending on the severity of symptoms. And I also wanted to mention lobelia. Lobelia has been used in severe cases to help with oxygenation. When the levels of oxygen were very uh, low and it was recommended to initiate ventilator. So in this uh, uh, case that I heard about, they were using five to 10 drops of lobelia every one to two hours as needed. And mullein tea is an herb that grows wild everywhere and is another herb that is helpful for um, the lung. If the person is having a lot of shortness of breath because they're going into the stage where there's uh, co co coagulation or blood clots, um, this is, was shared by, um, by Dr. Mark Sandoval. And this is his recommendation. He is the, the physician in charge at uh, UG Pines. Natokinase, 200 milligrams per day. Garlic, two capsules, three times per day. Ginger powder, a quarter teaspoon, three times a day. And Welch's grape juice, one cup, three times a day, as well as evening primrose oil, 1000 milligrams, three times a day. So these are all possibilities of agents that may help. Of course, as I said earlier, you wanna check with your physician. Remember to begin treatment as soon as experiencing symptoms. Delaying treatment is the worst thing that we could do. It will only worsen symptoms and delay recovery. And second, I want to mention that we want to be prepared as much as possible ahead of time by purchasing necessary items, just in case. Even berries and fruits, if we get some frozen ones and have them handy and now we can't go to the grocery store, well, at least we have something that we can use. Share what, what you have learned with your loved ones and continue learning. We are all in this together. We're just learning. And I thank you for coming today. I just wanna remind you that above all, we need to trust God. And remember this text, Philippians 4.13, I can do all things through Christ, which strengthens me. So even though it may seem like a lot of work, this is doable and it works. And so again, I wanna thank you and encourage you to continue learning. Maybe in the future, we can have another program where other experts can share with you um, better than I could this uh, topic. Thank you.